Hey guys, what's up? Sorry I was missing for a minute there. I actually took a little vacation, a much, much needed vacation and break from reality too. Um, so their slogan is serious sailing, serious fun. Most boats that they make in the world get produced to maybe 500 times, maybe a thousand times if it's a really good boat. Some really awesome boats even go a couple thousand into a production run, but this one, more than 31,000 boats. Which is not bad, considering it was designed in 1931. Its sailors consist of some of the world's best sailors ever. Names you would know. There's four top Olympic medalists from sailing. And there's five ISAF World Sailor of the Year Award winners. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about Snipe. Snipe isn't exactly a boat. It's more important than any one boat because it's a whole class of boats. And if you clicked this thumbnail and got to this video, you undoubtedly know a thing or two about sailboat racing. Moreover, what you would probably recognize as one design racing. If you aren't a racer, however, you should still watch this episode because what's the one thing we always say around here about racing? An hour of racing will teach you more than a whole weekend of day sailing. So when you see a sailboat race with every different make and model of sailboat represented, it's a handicap race. Because each boat is different in so many ways, the race committee, whoever's in charge of that governing body of whatever kind of handicap racing that is, assigns each boat a handicap. Um, and it's a handicap of so many seconds per mile in an effort to make every boat competitive with every other boat. This sort of handicap racing is a ton of fun. It's the stuff that I usually do. And, and it's fun because you can basically race. You can turn up on any boat you happen to have and you aren't restricted to any make or model. Whatever you have is what you can run and the handicap will make it hopefully so that you are competitive. However, the handicaps finish times can differ wildly if the handicap system is off by even a few seconds or if one of the boats, say, has $100,000 invested in upgrades that don't change its handicap enough. And we all know that one guy, don't we? On the other side of sailboat racing is something we have called one design racing. This is where every boat at the start line is basically the same boat for all intents and purposes. The name of the game in one design is simply to get to the finish line first, and it attempts to pit one sailor against the other sailor when everybody has the same boat. The downside to one design, of course, means you have to buy and maintain the same make and model boat that everyone else has. So it's a lot harder to find a large and reliable one design race fleet to run with unless you live in a sailing mecca like Annapolis or somewhere in Florida um, or some places on the Great Lakes where there's a lot of one design stuff. It also means that one design racing can be a lot more expensive. If a boat gets very popular in a certain geographical area because of one design racing that happens there, it tends to drive the price way up. And I think the laser is a great example of this. Because everyone wants one, the value of the fiberglass and the rig and, and all that end up being worth more than what the materials and the R&D and the manufacturing costs actually are. The, the fact that it's a laser makes it worth twice as much than if it was the same amount of fiberglass built by the same person just not a laser. Speaking of costs, Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. Uh, we've got a couple new patrons and I want to thank you guys so much. You make this whole thing possible. One of the best examples of a one design race boat are the J boats, specifically the J24, which we talk about a lot around here because they are that bloody good. But the J boats don't get all the glory compared to our subject today. And the J-boats are a much newer phenomenon compared to our subject today. Snipes are a big name in the one design game, raced in 40 different fleets all over the US, North America, and a couple of other countries. Um, they claim some 450 members to the one design fleets, and not just to sail locally, the Snipe class sails a lot in regional events, and even national events, and there's a world championship event. The Snipe at 15 foot 6 inches is built specifically for competition. It's fast and being designed in 1931 and still built today, it really is a testament to an amazing boat and an amazing design. You can even order plans from places like Snipe USA to build one yourself um, if you're so inclined. And they're small enough that you can build it in a single car garage and they're light enough, less than 400 pounds with a new design that you can tow it with anything and launch it anywhere. I mean, three guys could probably pick it up and put it in off a brake wall. 
um, just about anywhere you want, which is good because the one design races, if that's what you want to do, are all over the place. Now, this is an extremely valuable piece of information that goes toward the value of the boat. Some boats just have a following that never seems to go away, like the J boats we mentioned, or the Albergs, or the Lasers. That list goes on and on. But as the owner myself of a boat with almost no following whatsoever, in fact, no following whatsoever, I know the downside to that. I have a Hughes 35, of which there is no owner's group. There's no experts. In fact, I think I've become the expert on the boat. I get countless emails every year from, as best as I can tell, the other maybe 10 Hughes 35 owners in the world um, asking me questions. And most often, I don't know the answers. I just maybe have more miles on a Hughes 35 than anybody else right now. Um, this is the opposite, though, for boats like the Snipe. And the Snipe community takes it one step further than just having those subject matter experts available in the online forums and the local clubs. Their community is known to be one of the friendliest and easiest to become a part of, the most family-oriented, and honestly, you can't put a price on that sort of a, a support system for the boat that you're owning. And it's a diverse membership. Head to any Snipe event and you'll have 16-year-old sailors who are extremely good um, up against decorated award-winning race captains with a lifetime of experience racing and they're pitted against each other running door to door with the biggest smiles on their faces anyone has ever had on a sailboat. This kind of brings me to my main point about snipe sailboats. We talk a lot around Lady K Sailing about world traveler cruisers, big heavy beasts, um, stuff you might actually want to buy right now or that you might be shopping for. And to be honest, those videos when we make them get a lot more views than this one. But I like to do passion projects too. And the snipe has always been one of the passion projects that I wanted to talk about and I wanted to research and I wanted to share with you guys. Not because it's going to get a lot of views or it's going to be a successful video, but because I think it's important to talk about the Snipe. And not because you'll want to sail it to the Caribbean or something, uh, but because sailing wouldn't be what sailing is without boats like the Snipe. Our big comfy cruisers wouldn't be as cheap as they are without the Snipe or the Laser or, or all the other boats like that. The technology that makes our boats safer and faster certainly wouldn't be around without racing. And... All the awesome new models of cruisers would never even have been designed unless there were sailors interested in buying them. And that's a big part of where these boats come in. Most hardcore sailors get their start in cheap, easy to use little sailing dinghies, or if they're lucky, racing dinghies like the Snipe. The Snipe has been pulling new people into the sailing world since the 1930s. And I can't think of any other design that can make that claim. Since the 1930s, this boat has been making young, aspiring, looking for a hobby kids find sailing and get into it growing this thing that we all love. Few people have done as much for our sailing world than people like Ted Brewer and Carl Alberg or Lynn and Larry Party, but few boats have done as much as the Snipe. So if you have a chance, go check one out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will see you guys next week.